Welcome to this video on the ICCEE Process Toolbox. This video focuses on the cold supply chain tool. After a brief introduction of the project, the video highlights the main concepts of the cold supply chain tool and the features of the tool itself. The acronym of the project ICCEE stands for Improving Cold Chain Energy Efficiency in the Food and Beverage Sector. It is a European project funded under the EU's Horizon 2020 program. The focus of the project is on enhancing energy efficiency along entire cold supply chains in the food and beverage sectors. For further information on the project please visit the project homepage at www.iccee.eu. The mission of the project is based on three pillars. First, to facilitate the dissemination of energy efficiency measures within cold supply chains in the food and beverage sector, in particular in small and medium-sized companies. Second, to take a holistic perspective on the entire cold supply chain instead of looking at individual companies only. And third, to finally trigger and accelerate investments in energy-efficient technologies. The first tool of ICCEE Toolbox is referred to as the Cold Supply Chain Tool and it is based on three main key concepts of the food and beverage industry, quality losses, the need for refrigeration, and the consequent energy consumption and environmental impacts. One of the main reasons contributing to food waste and quality losses is the poor temperature control management, which can occur at any stage of the cold chain. The quality decreases over time, even when the product is kept at the optimal temperature in the different phases of the cold chain. As can be seen from the graphs, the potential for food waste increases with higher storage time for example with longer supply chain, due to globalization. Furthermore, different foods show a different sensitivity of quality degradation with respect to temperature. Refrigeration is vital for preserving the quality of food and beverage. Currently only 10% of the food produced is properly refrigerated and up to 30% is lost before it reaches the home refrigerator. Food waste in the cold chain can occur at different stages of the value chain, storage, packaging and processing, distribution and transport, and refrigerated or frozen storage and display at the point of sale. Refrigeration is responsible for a high energy consumption, about 20% of the world's electricity consumption. Three main environmental impacts related to the food and beverage industry. Indirect emissions from energy generated by power plants, mainly for refrigeration purpose. Direct emissions from refrigerant leakages. Direct emissions from food waste, along the cold chain and for never eaten food. Higher temperatures in logistic activities, lead to lower energy consumption for refrigeration but to higher quality losses. For higher storage time, as previously seen. Both the energy requirements for refrigeration and the quality losses increases. The aim of the CSC tool is, to assess and map the energy flows, of each energy carrier, along the logistic activities of the cold supply chain to develop an analytical model for the evaluation of the specific energy consumption and quality losses to serve as a benchmark for what if analyzes. Let's take a closer look at the tool. This tool on the supply chain deals with the energy requirements in storage and transport activities along coal supply chains and the impact of storage time and temperature on the food quality and energy consumption. The aim of the tool is to understand and help minimize the overall specific energy consumption along cold supply chains. For this purpose, it allows to analyze the energy requirement in storage and transport activities, and the time temperature effects on food quality and energy consumption. The target group refers to supply chain managers and environmental managers. The info sheet provides the basic information of the tool and allows the user to select the desired language from a list. In the input sheet, the user can fill in the data required by the tool functioning. The supply chain is the series of processes involved in the production and supply of goods, from when raw materials are firstly made until final goods are bought or used i.e., from farm to fork. These processes are managed by a set of companies operating with different purposes and at different stages, this creating a network. The supply chain proposed consists of seven stages from the raw material supplier to the retailer. Your own supply chain may look different. In this case, you may omit or aggregate input of some stages to match your own chain. The input required deals with the logistic activities of the stages with temperature control requirements in a sample cold supply chain. Specifically, three different macro categories of input data can be detected. Firstly, 
General inputs are required in terms of annual demand rate of the final product, space occupation of the raw material and of the final product, amount of raw material for producing a unit of final product, and the product family of both raw material and final product. Then, for each warehouse the following data are requested, the average value of ambient temperature in the hottest season, the inside reference temperature during the storage activities, the annual consumption for refrigeration purpose for each energy carrier, the storage size, the production rate, if any, the average warehouse utilization and the average storage time at the warehouse. Finally, for the transport activities, the user should provide the fuel type, the average distance for round trip, the average travel time requiring refrigeration, the distance traveled per unit of fuel, the electrical power of refrigeration equipment, if any, the payload which defines the maximum amount of product transportable per trip, the average amount of product transported, the average value of ambient temperature in the hottest season, and the inside reference temperature during the transport activities. As already said these data should be provided for each stage of the cold chain, warehouse at the raw material supplier, transport between supplier and producer, considered as a single drop, which means single origin and single destination, raw material and final product warehouses at the producer, transport between supplier and distribution center, considered as single drop, warehouse at the distribution center, transport between the distribution center and the retailer, considered as multi-drop which means single origin and multi-destinations, backroom warehouse and display area at the retailer. In this final sheet, the results of the supply chain model applied to the input data are reported in terms of specific energy consumptions, SEC, by energy carrier, and in terms of quality losses. The impact of the quality losses on the energy consumption is also evaluated since the energy spent for goods that do not reach the requested quality is wasted. These results are reported for each link of the cold chain. This allows the identification of the stages with the highest energy consumption and quality losses. Moreover, the average storage time is also reported per each link since this parameter is relevant for the determination of the quality degradation. This information can serve as a basis to support decision makers in the prioritization of the energy efficiency measures to reduce the overall energy consumptions of the specific supply chain. From this first table it is possible to observe the specific energy consumption of each energy carrier, mainly, electricity, natural gas and gas oil, for each stage of the coal chain, in particular for each warehouse and each transport, and for the overall coal chain, namely total specific energy consumption, prior to consideration of quality losses. While the total specific energy consumption, considering quality losses, introduces the impact of quality losses on the energy consumption for the wasted energy. In the below graphs, the specific energy consumption by energy carriers is depicted per stage of the cold chain. At the same time, the results in terms of quality degradation and storage time are hereafter reported. The indicator depicted can support decision makers in prioritizing the intervention in order to improve the energy efficiency of the cold chain. For instance, for the specific case shown in the example it is possible to observe that the warehouse at the raw material supplier is one of the most consuming stage and at the same time it is where the highest quality losses occur, even though the storage time is almost negligible with respect to other stages. Hence, the priority in improving energy performance should be given to this stage. On the website, specifically in the resources section, energy efficiency measures best practices, it is possible to have a look on the most relevant interventions for the food and beverage industry. Improvements can range from the investment in new and more performant technologies, which have the potential to reduce energy consumption by 15% to 40%, to the implementation of more straightforward and less expensive maintenance and operational practices for the refrigeration system and the overall production process which can frequently reduce energy costs by 15% or more. The EEMs relevant for the cold chains have been grouped into 10 categories, auxiliary technologies, buildings, employee, energy generation and recovery, industrial symbiosis, maintenance, management, monitoring and control, refrigeration system, and transport. Each category has a set of fact sheets presenting measures from real cases. 
category type of energy efficiency measure. Auxiliary technology, more efficient ventilation system for cold warehouses, more efficient lighting system, for example LEDs for cold warehouses, efficient motors, filter, pumps, drive systems, steam generator with the appropriate sizing, efficient inside refrigerant cycle, compressor, heat exchanger, evaporator, condenser, throttle valves, building. Improved insulation, for example, replacement of old windows, removal of thermal bridges, insulation of walls, ceilings, roofs, pipework, reduction of air infiltration of rooms and or display area, repairing door deals and curtains, ensuring that door can be closed, air curtains on doors, warehouse with separated compartments, with automated glide racks. Energy generation slash recovery. Waste heat recovery, for example, absorption chiller, renewable energy for electrical and thermal energy, for example, PV, street, HP, solar cooling, energy storage system. Employee. Improved employees' awareness, active engagement, training and education of operators and drivers. Maintenance. Regular cleaning of condensers and evaporator coils. Minimization of compressed air leakages. Review. Optimization of the cooling distribution system. Management. EMS, energy audit, exploitation of energy benchmarks. Set temperature range for cooling to upper limit, adjustment of cooling temperatures. Monitoring and control. Visualization of NPeace, real-time monitoring system, automated tracing. Use of smart heating systems, automatic, intelligent control system. Refrigeration system. Less oversized cooling systems. Alternative refrigeration technology, design and refrigerant, retrofitting refrigeration display systems, closed display cabinets. Refrigerant cycle, for example, one, two stage, intercooler etc., design and usage of free cooling. Alternative refrigeration technologies, for example, solar cooling systems, thermal chillers, heat pumps. Retrofit of R22 refrigeration system by centralized ammonia, NH3, system. Transport. Improved insulation of trucks, for example, air curtain, fuel monitoring for drivers and training drivers for fuel consumption reduction. Optimized travel routes, for example, reduction of empty return trips, modal shift. Alternate means of transport, for example portable refrigerated units for LTL. Industrial symbiosis. Byproduct exchanges. Sharing of infrastructures, utilities or access to services, for example, energy or waste treatment, biogas, cooperation on issues of common interest, for example, emergency planning, training or sustainability planning. By clicking on a specific measure, the user is redirected to a technical fact sheet deepening the knowledge of the intervention. As it can be seen from this example, details on the intervention, cost, potential savings, technology readiness level, and non-energy benefits are reported, if available. Once selected the most promising energy efficiency measures, form the list provided on the website, it is possible to modify the input data affected and to observe the changes in the overall results. Moreover, it is possible to observe the time temperature effects on food quality and energy consumption, for instance, by varying ambient and or inside temperature and the average storage time at the warehouse. For instance, in the example reported, halving the storage time at each warehouse it is possible to reduce the SEC of about 6%. This was our presentation of the SSC tool within the Yiki Project Toolbox. If you are curious about more details other tools videos are available in our channel. Thank you for watching.